Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today by supporting the Going In Raw Patreon. You can enjoy access to the live taping of the show, exclusive merchandise, and patron-only episodes, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. This is Charlotte, and you're watching Going In Raw. That sounds terrible. What's up? This is the most must-see WWE superstar of all time and his lovely, gorgeous wife. Marie. <laughs> and you are going in SmackDown Live. Who needs Raw? What's up? It's your girl, Sasha Banks, the legit boss, and you are watching Going In Raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. And you are tuned in to Going In Raw right now. How you doing? Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson, and also where all podcasts are available, Mm -hmm. including, but not limited to, Podbean, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, iHeart Radio, Podcast. iTunes. Oh, yeah, iTunes, where we are in the top one. We've been in the top 150 pretty consistently over the past couple weeks. In fact, earlier this week, we were... One notch above Stone Cold Steve Austin. And then later on that day, he was like, eh, eh. And he uh, brought it up. He brought himself back up to over going in raw levels, which is good for him. Yes. You know. So, yeah. Uh, speaking of which, if you hit that download button or subscribe button, then we can be eh, eh, to Steve Austin and maybe one day get a notch above him. That'd be wonderful. So, oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Um, so we're going to talk about SmackDown today, Larson. Yeah. We're going to talk about the almost tragedy that nearly befell James Ellsworth. Mm-hmm. World's best chicken sandwiches squared off in the ring with Miz and I and the IC, current IC champion Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, that's what started the show. Started the show. You want to start there? Yeah, we'll start there. What happened, Larson? So the uh, show starts after a prolonged No Mercy recap. Uh, with uh, Dolph's theme music, he comes to the ring. Um, looks like he had a, a Hype Bros shirt on underneath his hoodie. Yes. So I thought that was a tease for something. But uh, he uh, gives a promo talking about uh, winning the IC title and how the wrestling ring, a wrestling ring, the, a WWE wrestling ring, mm-hmm. is where he belongs. Yes. Yeah. Um, cue the Miz's music. He and Maurice come to the ring they look so depressed they're wearing all they're wearing funeral colors all dark colors they all look somber and in fact the Miz says it was a funeral for his legacy and it was, he was mourning the intercontinental championship because it was now around the waist of Dolph Ziggler of a waste of space Dolph Ziggler yeah Dolph he Ziggler say that I just no. paraphrase for him yeah <coughs> so uh they went back and forth a little bit um Dolph says hey I got something I want to show you Miz on the Titan Tron, um, showed the end of the match, and specifically, there's a moment after uh, the Miz was defeated, mm-hmm. where he rested his chin on the bottom rope, and he had a forlorn, a saddened look on his face, for yeah. he had just lost his prize yes. title. Yeah. And cuts back to Dolph, Miz, Maurice in the ring, and Dolph asks the Miz, "Were you crying?" <laughs> yeah, I know. He said it in a dick way, too. Were you, are you crying? Are you crying now? Were you crying? Yeah. Oh, that's the worst. I hate when people ask me if I'm crying. It's rude. What's wrong with crying? Do you cry a lot? Not a lot. When's the last time you cried? I don't remember. Really? Yeah. That's a good question, though. I'm trying to think if it was... See, like, way. usually if I'm... If I get emotionally overwhelmed yeah. i don't cry yeah. i just get misty oh yeah i just yeah. kind of like get to the point where i'm almost going to and then just kind of i ends can't there. remember i the only memorable time i cried i was with you was oh with yeah cigar rose concert yep. and my dog had just died yep. or was about to die or something like that boy i was yeah that, that really that cigar rose music man that brings out the feels in you yeah it's something very fierce. emotional music dying dog plus cigar rose equals, equals steve crying like a baby yeah. Yeah. I was sitting next to you and I was like, is everything okay? You were very disturbed. I wasn't disturbed. I was concerned. <laughs> I wanted to make sure you were fine. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so, but Miz wasn't crying. No. Um, instead, he brought out the Spirit Squad. 
Yes. Um, who came down to have, and they did a little cheer about doing a handicap match. Yeah. I thought it was, Kenny Dykstra looks amazing. By yeah, the way. he's in great shape. He looks, when he does the flex thing and you can just see all those lines of muscle on his body, he looks, he looks like an anatomical, one of the little anatomical figures you can get. Um, so, yeah, that led to a handicap match, Spirit Squad versus Dolph. Yeah. Um, Dolph gained the upper hand. Kenny with a super kick, got yeah. the pin. Yeah. As soon as the ref counted that three count, Miz was in the ring and uh, proceeded with a beat down. Yes. Yeah. Um, gave uh, Dolph a skull-crushing finale. Uh, where he was going to beat on him some more. And then he, Slater and Rhino made the save, which yeah. was weird. Why wasn't it the hype bro? I know, because it looked like... Dolph was wearing... That didn't look like Dolph A was hype wearing. bro shirt. And he even talked about Zack Ryder during his promo. He said, no more spray tanning Dolph... Uh, Zack Ryder. Why know. wasn't it the hype bro? Why wasn't he wearing a... You know why? You know a why? Heath Slater shirt. It's because Heath Slater is massively over, and they wanted the guys... Actually, you know why? He, you know why the hype bro didn't come out? Why? Because it still would have been a handicap match. <laughs> it would have been three on two. No, man. We got to stop that. That Why? has to end. See, again, I think you're just my imaginary. You're everything I don't like about me. And I don't like that in-joke that I started. Because Mojo Raleigh was amazing this week. And all he did was say a couple words and it was hilarious. <laughs> we'll get to that in a bit. You can you can make your case for ending that in-joke. At that oh, time. Oh, okay. Can we do a soapbox segment here on the SmackDown show? Sure. All right. Steve Soapbox. Listen, all right. fans. Listen, After. Well, no, not yet. Audience people. Wait. Okay. Next on the show, yeah, uh, Shane McMahon, Daniel Bryan, uh, challenge Raw. What are you doing over there? Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You, you, I have not. I'm not dropping any balls over here. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. I'm going. Uh, Shane and Daniel Bryan challenge Raw to uh, three. Correct. Three Survivor Series tag tag traditional. Traditional Survivor Series men matches. versus men. They said the best five of SmackDown versus the best five of Raw. Yeah. Men, the best five uh, women's wrestlers of each brand, and then yeah. the five best tag teams of each brand. So that's a 20-person <laughs> yeah. match. Number one. 20-person elimination number tag one, match. Number one, when they said this stuff, they they look ridiculous. Number she, have you ever noticed Shane looks like he's always, he always has a cold? He sounds like he always has a cold. He looks like he's always tired. Yeah. And he sounds like he always has a cold. He talks like this. He was and Stone Cold kind of sounds like he has a cold when he's on his podcast. Too. Yeah. Uh, Shane was really dressed up tonight. Yeah, and then Daniel Bryan was really preppy. He had like a Susan G. Komen shirt on. No, it was like it was like a like a like a zip up. They both look like startup CEOs still. And they sound like it. They were so reading off teleprompter today. Yeah, it was, and it was a mark different from when they usually just kind of banter from like yeah. maybe a writer's script. This was like straight up reading off a teleprompter, and yeah. it was so stiff and weird and cold. Yeah, they weren't selling the Survivor Series matches to me. I wasn't really sold on it because when you think about it, when you think about it, also they say our five best female competitors, which SmackDown has, I think six altogether. Um, with Eva Marie, it'd be seven. With E. Marie at seven. So two, you know, poor unlucky souls are going to be left out of that one. You know, I mean, can you claim out of seven people, five of them are, I mean, I guess you can. Because it's like, you know, our five best, which means two of them are, I don't know. It's just weird. Yeah. And on Raw, I think they have exactly five. They will count them. Charlotte, Sasha, Bailey, Dana Brooke, Nia, Nia Jax. Jax, Alicia Fox. Oh, yeah. Emma Lena. Okay, not even around. Um, I'm just making her she will be by the time the Star okay. Series happens. And uh, Summer Rae is Summer Rae on has not been, the roster. Been seen forever. So that's eight. That's eight. Okay, all right. So anyways, that's still stretching a little bit. Um, and then the tag division. I think that's the real stretch. Ascension, Vaudevillains, Hype Bro, American Alpha, Usos. If they're going to participate with their heels, why should they? Uh, Heath Slater and Rhino. Um, who am I missing? Is that it? I think that's pretty much it. Okay. I mean, the point is, there's not a lot of depth anywhere because of the brand split. Now is not the time to be doing a bragging rights type thing in this. In well, this, in this in this format that they're suggesting. Yeah, at least not. Tell having them what our better idea is. All divisions involved. Like if they just want to do a five person elimination Survivor Series match. Yeah. Just one to determine uh, brand dominance. Cool. Champion versus champion is great, but then you can't really do that. You can't do that. You can't really do that. No. That's why I always thought the idea of a universal champion, where you have a tournament, 
where each side of the bracket is is its own brand. Mm -hmm. And so one representative from SmackDown will face one representative from Raw in the finals, not necessarily the brand's champions. Yeah. To determine a, a universal champion, right. annual tournament, right. belts only defended once a year. Right. Yeah. That's the best way to prove which band, sorry, which brand is better. I agree. I totally agree. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see what Raw has to say about it on Monday. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe they'll just decide to do what we, what we just said. It'll be interesting if they if they have a counter offer. It'd be interesting to see if there was a, uh, like weeks of negotiation that took place oh, on yeah, air. Sure. Yeah, not five, but three. Yeah. yeah, not three, but four. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Be fascinating. I would like that. I'd actually prefer that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we have uh, Nikki Bella. Yeah, what had is a... this? I saw the same <laughs> thing. Nikki shoots on total Bellas. What the I hell just, is that? I just wrote that because it made me laugh. Um, oh, okay. Is she it... had a she had a backstage interview. Okay, she had a where she uh, talked about total Bellas, and yeah. then Carmella attacked her. I like when she said. You know, my entire family's living under one roof, so it's gonna be total chaos. And I'm like, my family lives under one roof, and I mean, it's fine. I mean, we got but that's and that's not technically true, not because it's not Daniel and Bree are in the guest house. Yeah, that's separate right. house, yeah. separate structure. Yeah, not all under one roof. Anyways, Nikki did a fine job selling us on total. You know, well, all I mean, we need is John Cena. Yeah, we just need stern that. John Cena's ground. I rules. really wish that John Cena would stay in character from Total Bellas when he's on WWE programming. That would be much more entertaining. Yeah, that'd be great. Like before any interview starts, he lays out ground rules. So, anyways, Carmella then laid out. You Nikki know, Bella, right? That. What? Uh, uh. Didn't didn't Carmella then lay out Nikki Bella? Yeah, hey, I said that already. Yeah, she laid out Nikki Bella while she was shooting on uh, Total, Total Bellas, Bellas. Yeah, and uh, she sort of hovered around her. I, I wish I think it'd be better if she like you know. But that was earlier in the day. The interview and the beatdown. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. Fast but, forward to the present. Yeah. And Carmella has a match against Naomi. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Naomi does a little dance, and David Otanga, in his infinite wisdom. In his Harvard-educated vernacular, says, "says Oh, it's my favorite time of the night, dance break." And I'm like, "What? The uh, this the, is a wrestling show." The commentary on a whole this evening was extra crap. Yeah, <laughs> like a, I'm a I'm a huge Seinfeld fan. Yeah, I love Seinfeld. Oh yeah, I drop Seinfeld ref references all the time. It's great. We but when did. Maura Ronello said, "Today is the 20 year anniversary of uh, Elaine Benes doing her dance." I could actually get into tomorrow if his pop culture references became more and more bizarre and weird. Yeah, if they were super obscure. If they were super obscure and super surreal. Yeah. Like if they were if they even trumped like, you know, Dennis Miller on Monday Night Football. Remember when Dennis Miller yeah. did Monday Night Football and it was yeah. just a train wreck? It was yeah. so bad. Yeah. Have you have you did I tell you this that I watched some of Dennis Miller's old HBO shows? Because they have them, they have them all on the HBO oh, yeah. app. They're so bad. Yeah. Like it's it's just that like sort of white male privilege thing, just to, like to the extreme, and I'm like I never noticed it back then. Like yeah. he was just trying to be anti PC, but he was just coming off as just like a horrible person. Ugh. <laughs> and of course now he's like what a shill for Fox News or something yeah, like he that. Is. It's so and it's so awkward. I don't know. That's a tangent. If you want to see some really really dated political commentary, check out some old Dennis Miller live. That was from what the mid nineties. Mm -hmm, yeah, I don't remember much about that show. Yeah, I, I I didn't I don't think we had HBO back then. But I was I loved Dennis Miller back on Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. Like he was hilarious. He was yeah. legitimately hilarious. Yeah. And then he just started getting all weird and like you know, hella right wing. I don't know. It was weird. Anyways, oh, you were talking about Mauro Ranello. I don't want him to go down that path. <laughs> that wouldn't be. But if he could start getting like really weird and surreal, yeah, 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 that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be hilarious. You know, it's not gonna happen though. No, of course it's not going to happen. They don't. I mean, they take half our suggestions that are doable, but half our other suggestions they don't. And take. then what? JBL called. Uh, he merged Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper in, into Bray, Bray Harper. Harper. Bray Harper. Yeah. It was going to be? Yeah, I don't know. It was weird. There were some other examples, but the commentary is just really not good tonight. It was bizarre. Anyways, getting back to Carmella versus Naomi. Uh, Nikki Bella. Uh, distracted Carmella, mm -hmm. allowing Naomi to pick up the win. I like that this is a feud. That, I like this about SmackDown. The feuds breathe. Yes, they breathe. Because I think we both more or less thought that after No Mercy, No Mercy, and especially after reports came out that both Cena and Ambrose were taking time off, right? Um, during these fall months, that we were kind of unsure what AJ was going to be doing. Yeah, but it, it, so it looks like Dean's going to stick around for a little bit. I kind of like this man because. 
Okay, so Dean's world title run was less than successful. Yes. If he had been super over, and I think it's a combination of two things. I, you know, I, I give him shit for saying he rested on his laurels, and that's kind of the popular thing to do. And I, I'm not sure if it's that or if he just wasn't given something meaty to do necessarily. That was part of it. I think that was part of it, but I also felt there was stuff like, okay, I, I get the feeling that Dean, the way he talked on that podcast anyways, I feel like he wasn't afraid to voice his opinion you know, like, I feel like Roman's probably the kind of guy who's like, I'm kind of new to this. I'll I'll just go in the direction yeah, you guys yeah, want yeah, me to yeah. go, and I'll try to do the best with it. Yeah. Dean's been around the business for a little mm-hmm. while. I get the feeling that he's probably the kind of guy who, if he's handed a script, and he kind of said as much on the podcast, if he's handed a script, he's going to be like, you're not going to write for me. I'm not going to do that. But I'll, I'll go in the direction you want me to yeah, go yeah, yeah. Um, because that's what you want me to do. That being said... When they say, hey, put on a goofy hat and act like you just came back from, you know, the the casinos. Yeah. He probably should have said, no, I'm supposed to be a really, I want to be like an intense champion guy. I want to be a badass. Like, but he's not opposed, guy. as we saw tonight, to doing comedy stuff. No, in the, in the right context, I think it works for him. But I think there are times when it just seems like he's doing nothing. Well, yeah. while, while he was world champion, I think that was yeah. a big problem. And again, I think that the majority of that is probably creative. I did feel like he sort of came more alive when he lost the belt, though. Yeah. I think we've seen that. Well, it happens a lot when, when faces get a little stale. Mm-hmm, yeah. Give them something to strive for. Yeah, exactly. And so um, where were we going with that? Um, I don't know. I know there was a, there was a point there. We can just talk about Alexa Bliss. Carmella versus Naomi. No, we got we got through that already. We did? Yeah. Well, how the hell did I end up talking about Dean Ambrose? There is a point there. Carmella lost to Naomi. Nikki, what, Nikki Bella was... She distracted. Oh, letting, letting oh, feuds there breathe. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm terrible. It's really late. I can't. We cannot use that as an excuse for having a subpar podcast, though. Well, I thought it was, I thought it, I thought it'd been pretty good up, up until that point. Me too. And then there's dead air. Anyways, so uh, I like that they're letting this Carmella Nikki thing breathe. Um, I like that they're giving Naomi wins. Yes. Um, Alexa Bliss was backstage watching the show, watching the show, watching the match, and uh, she was saying that you know she can beat. The, the interviewer came up, the robot interview 3000 person came up and asked her her thoughts on it. And she said, you know, if I knew that I was going to be facing Naomi at no mercy, I would have prepared for it. But it took me by surprise. I like that as an excuse for her loss. I think that's good. So she said, I can I can beat her today, tomorrow, any day of the week and twice on. And before she got the chance to say, I believe it's Sunday is the phrase. Mm-hmm. D. Bry comes up yep. and says, program and program with the interview robot. And the interview robot scattered off, and he said, so you can beat her any day of the week, huh? Uh-uh. How about next week on SmackDown Live, you take on Naomi in your rematch. That's going to be Alexa's win. They also announced yeah. that her match against uh, Becky Lynch is going to be November 8th, I believe. Yep, in Scotland. In Scotland. Um, so that's going to be fun, because Becky Lynch, obviously, is from that land, and she's going to go over huge against Alexa Bliss. That what do you think the odds are that, that will main event the show? Oh, I would love that so much. I think very high. Yeah. All the percent. I think that'd be great. I think you're right. Jimmy Uso took on Chad Gable. Yeah. One of the Usos took on Chad Gable. Jimmy. Jimmy. And uh, he got the win thanks to Jay. So Jimmy tried. He get, rolled up Chad Gable. Yeah, and usually if you're close to the ropes, mm-hmm. you will put your feet on the ropes for added leverage but this to help time, secure the pinfall. But this time Jay put his foot... Against his brother's butt and gave him leverage yeah. to, to get that it extra was a, pin. It was a creative way to cheat. It was, and they were very happy with themselves. I was very happy about this. The Usos desperately need wins right now if they're going to be taken seriously. Yes. I think they could be the best tag team in the in the company, in the on the brand. Yeah. And they need wins, though. Yes. Um, so the hype bros. Okay, here you go. Here's your, your soapbox segment. Steve soapbox segment. So uh, do you want to describe what happened in this segment? Or you just want to go straight to... Uh... Here's the problem, guys. Here's the problem. Okay, here. I'm going to sit back. And I honestly, you're probably going to hijack the joke. And, yeah, I, and and I'm not going to have anything to say about it. I can't do anything about it. Our wonderful friendo community, I love it, has a mind of its own. And will take things and run with them. And I love every second of it. But I want to talk about Mojo Raleigh. 
I want to talk about this guy because week after week, it's amazing fodder to talk about. And you guys won't let me because you say that he doesn't exist. And I know I started that and I, I, I get that. But I'm appealing to you now. We have to kill this joke. Hold on. Can I, can I uh, butt in for a moment? Please butt in now. <clears throat> Here's a solution that is diplomatic and, and maybe can make all parties See, in Fight Club, happy in or Fight satisfied. Club, we saw Tyler Durden. Let me finish. Uh, whenever you talk about Mojo Raleigh, yeah. you talk about him as if he does exist. Yes. What if you talk about him uh, through the prism of him being a projection of Zack Ryder's consciousness or unconscious or subconscious? Yeah. You don't do that. Yeah. If you did that, then you can still talk about Mojo Raleigh, the the projection, yeah. the imaginary being. I my thing is this, though. I, I really can't let and then go. And then the Friendoverse still gets to do the joke. <laughs> so, I'll never... I'll let you continue, sorry. I will never let go. Still my favorite aspect of that joke. I think it was Fenris, but I could be wrong. <laughs> I could be wrong. But is that one Photoshop, man. I got Somebody's got to bring that up. That one Photoshop where it was like, it was Mojo. It was, it was like four of them, four of the people. <laughs> The wrestlers and Mojo was kind of blurred and almost transparent. Oh my god, that made me laugh so hard. Yeah, that, that was, was good. so well done. That was very good. But between last week's amazing dick wiggle, <laughs> he's a train wreck, but he's so entertaining to watch. And on top of that, he looks exactly like Hilton. And see, he if, acts exactly like Hilton. See, but if if you discuss this all through the prism of him being a projection of Zack Ryder. It, it sounds so complicated the way you're putting it. It's though. not that complicated. It is complicated. I don't want to because do what it, what what what, what do Mojo Raleigh's actions say about Zack Ryder if he is an imaginary being? I don't know. This see this this is a whole new uh, area of this in joke that is yet to be explored. I feel like I can't explore that in 140 character tweets. I can't do That's that. That's why we have a, po- a podcast three times a week to discuss these things. Listen, man, Mojo and Zach were getting each other hyped up. <laughs> like you said on recap, they were just talking at each other. Yeah. It was it re- to, it totally reminded me of a custom story cutscene from 2K14. Yeah, even the camera movement was kind of yep. shaky, and they got that down. It's like art imitates life, imitates art. Yeah, that's what it is. And it's like, and it's like they were like kind of barely not looking at each other. And I couldn't make out what they were talking about. <laughs> I had For the most part, no clue what they were talking about. It was fantastic. Like Mojo was talking about Zach in his room by himself, playing with his toys, and Zach was saying something was a Comic Con exclusive, and he was saying that they need to stay focused. And then they turn around, but then also Mojo wanted to go out and party. He, well, that's what he always wants to do because that's what Zach really wants to do inside. But he knows he has to focus. There on, you go, as a person. There you go. So anyway, Zach Ryder turns around, and the Ascension is staring at him. Maybe because Zack Ryder was just ranting and raving to himself. <laughs> and Mojo Again, there Raleigh you go. See, it's fun. says, you guys are just lurking there. What's your deal? And the look on his face was so perfect. Yeah. And the Ascension completely no-sold it because Mojo said it, not Zack Ryder. It was part of Zack Ryder's id. See? Or his ego. Whatever. See, that's fun, huh? Can we please at least transition so that we can talk about Mojo, even in the context of him being part of... Zack Ryder's it or ego or whatever it would be. Yeah. I think it's it. Anyway. See, that's fun. That's fun. It was great. And it's further evidence that, that he doesn't exist in the ether- in the world that we know. Perhaps you know, in the ethereal. You know, whenever I, 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 I uh, find pictures of the hype bro, <laughs> yeah. either like in their entrance. The last time I looked at one, I noticed that... Uh, <laughs> there was there was Mojo in the foreground on one turnbuckle, <laughs> yeah, and then Zack Ryder in, in the background on another turnbuckle. Yeah. But he was placed that he covered up the S in Bros. <laughs> There's all sorts great. of hidden messages. I know there are. I think like God, somebody showed us a tweet from like I think it was like Wrestle Inc. or Wrestle Zone, one of them. Yeah, and they were talking about him, and they said hype bro. So I know, like, it's one of those things, like the number 23. Like, if you want to see it, you'll see it. Yeah. It's great. It's fantastic. Anyways, I love all <laughs> you guys out there running with the jokes that we crack here on the show. It's fantastic. I love every second of it. And no, it never gets old. But I just, I have this burning desire to talk about Mojo Raleigh. It's, it's amazing. There's an avenue to make everybody happy. All right. And I, and I think we found it. And I think now we can proceed in that direction. Very Agreed? Good. Agreed. Okay. Shake on it. Now, let's talk about AJ Styles' victory speech. 
It was fantastic. I loved every second of it. AJ seems to be relishing his role as as he sees he's he, what he's saying. He's like, yeah, come on, cheer me, cheer me, you losers. Yeah. He seems to be really amping up him as heel. Yeah. Um, because they probably like, dude, they're cheering for you no matter what. And so he has to ramp that up a little bit. But I think he's gonna continue to be entertaining AJ. He's not gonna be like Ms. AJ anytime soon. People just love him, dude. Well, Ms. has been entertaining lately. Yeah, no, I know. I know. Well, I know, but Miz hasn't been trying to be entertaining. He's been entertaining because he's been such a really good heel. Yeah. We we appreciate him, not in terms of like Kevin Owens saying shit that's actually funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, let's see here. Dean Ambrose came out. Dean Ambrose comes down with uh, piss and vinegar. because Oh, because AJ, during his speech, said he's going to give someone an opportunity on SmackDown. Main event status right now on SmackDown. Because SmackDown is a show of opportunity. Right, exactly. So uh, Dean comes out yeah. and takes umbrage with that because and Dean thinks that he should have a shot. Well, AJ was taking umbrage with Dean coming down because he's like, you're not the opponent that I handpicked. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, AJ says, you know, it's not you, it's this guy. And out comes James Ellsworth, and everybody pops. Twitter goes crazy, and it's magnificent. And he's as awkward and weird looking as possible as he possibly can. And he's be. so excited, and he's super to be getting excited. that opportunity. Exactly, it's fantastic. And uh, Dean Ambrose says, "Hold up, never mind. I totally want to see this." And then he retreats to commentary. Well, he starts to much to the dismay of AJ Styles, and AJ Styles says, "No." No, you're not going to distract James Ellsworth. He needs to be on point. Daniel Bryan comes down, says, Dean, you're going to be referee. Yeah. And if, AJ, if you touch Dean, you're going to get fined or suspended. Dean takes the, the, the ref's shirt off of him, puts it on himself. Empties out his pockets. Empties out his pockets. Save for his cell phone, which would come into play and later. And just the interaction between AJ and Dean during that bit did you was watch, really, really well Did done. you watch during the commercial break? Um, right after the match started, mm. when uh, Dean was patting down AJ. No, you 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 were talking about it a little bit, but I was. Yeah, it was pretty fun because they they did a whole comedy segment during okay. the whole commercial break because it was yeah. nice this week on SmackDown, which I, a thing they started doing on the baseball games, the playoff games okay, this weekend, yeah. where I'll, where they'll go to commercial. Yeah, but in a, a picture in picture, the smaller screen, they'll still play what's going on in the right. baseball game, or in this case, on SmackDown. Right, right, which was great. Right, yeah, fantastic. So, um. So Dean like pats AJ down, mm-hmm. looking for weapons or foreign yeah. objects, yeah. and he goes to James Ellsworth. He's about to do the same thing, and he just goes, "No, nah, you're fine." Yeah, yeah. And there's great. the you know the whole match was a comedy match. Yeah, it was, and it was like a 30 minute segment on SmackDown, but it was highly entertaining. It was yes. really well executed. And then we got to the Styles Clash segment of the evening, which terrified everybody watching because Twitter blew up. Everybody freaked out. Because what do you do when you take a Styles Clash? You put your chin up. You have to put your chin up. Everybody knows this. Now, I understand being there in front of a bunch of people and you're upside down. You might not quite grasp that concept. You know, it's easy to say. It might not be easy to grasp that concept. Well, it's it's easy to say and it's easy to understand it, but to put that into practice. Right. In the heat of the moment. Exactly. And... Ellsworth tucked his chin mid clash and he would have been paralyzed if not for AJ on the fly, kind of just loosening up the, the clash and landing on his hands and knees, hands and feet, hands and feet. Yeah. Hands and feet. So that Ellsworth's neck didn't take the brunt of it. Yep. Um, so it makes me wonder if going into it, even if styles told him, Hey, head up, chin up. I know the joke. You don't have a chin, but head up. If he still understood, I wonder if he would have done that regardless. Oh, maybe. Just to be on the complete safe side. And yeah. I had no idea there was a safe way to do the clash. I didn't know that he, he had the wherewithal to do that. But again, it's AJ Styles. It he's, could have just an been inaudible. An yeah, it could be. Maybe he had a sense that something wasn't right. It's it's one or the other. Um, I don't know. I would think it wouldn't surprise me if he just decided to do that regardless. Oh, probably. How, how are you going to know? I know. You know, I know. How are you going to know? I, I know. know. If you do this and you're looking at the guy. Um so, yeah, and but, you know, still, you know, even though he landed that way, it's like what, what we saw, what we saw. Oh, in real time? Oh, my gosh. It was, it was horrifying. Because he tucked his chin and, it, and then he lands in a weird way. And it's like, oh, God. And then he lays there. And the way they played the segment out, he wasn't slated to do anything for a good minute or so. And so he's laying he's there. He's laying there motionless. And he sold it to perfection. He sold it great. 
And but we're thinking dude, he could be. And I think we would have known because then Dean delivers a, a dirty deeds to AJ Styles and then gets James Ellsworth on top of Styles. And at that point, either he was going to be dead weight or he was fine. And it turned out he was fine. He did move. He did use his own power to do that. He didn't make Dean like carry dead weight. Yeah. And so at that point, we both kind of figured, OK, he should be OK at this point. So he covers Styles. Styles kicks out at two. Yeah. Dean gives him another Dirty Deeds. Yep. Uh, then puts him on him again. And he and James Ellsworth notches the win against Dean Ambrose. And then Dean carries him out of the ring, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah. And Ellsworth was still selling it like a million bucks. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised even uh, even after AJ kind of protected the landing if, if Ellsworth got his bell rung a little bit. Now, we'll take a look. I'm going to take it when we're done here. I'm going to take a look at Talking Smack. We, it, we're literally doing this while Talking yeah. Smack is on, so we don't have no idea what he's saying. Yeah. If he talked about The Clash... Talking Smack is the kind of show they're a bit looser, looser on that show. Yeah. So uh, I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if they brought it up. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me because yeah. they they seem to have a bit more freedom on that. And if he didn't get, you know, like, you know, if he didn't land his head and get his bell rung a little bit, that was a great sell job. Yeah, oh, it was a fantastic I mean, I was convinced job. that he was messed up. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, Daniel Bryan and Shane, they said, hey, we have something planned for James Ellsworth next week. So, um so yeah, you know, hats off to to AJ Styles. Yeah, best wrestler in the world right yeah. now. Yeah, um, and then in the main event, the Wyatt family, Bray Harper took on. Ray. So earlier in the night, Randy Orton said he goes down into the again the the bowels of the arena and says to Kane, who's hanging out down there, of course, and he says, uh, "I'm tired of living in Bray Wyatt's world, Kane." You're a big weirdo, so can you come help me face these two other weirdos? Or something to that effect. And Kane says, Sure. I'm your man. And so um, the main event was a tag match, the Wyatts versus uh, Orton and Kane, the impromptu tag team. Yeah. And uh, and it was it was you said earlier you were you were still kind of traumatized from Ellsworth so you didn't really pay too close attention. Yeah, to I wasn't really paying that close. It attention It was a decent brawl of a match, but um, really really cool finish. Where Orton was going for the hot tag on Kane, Kane was outside, you know, get, reaching for the tag. Bray Bray's sort of ha! thing happens. Lights go out. Lights go out, and uh, when they come back on, Luke Harper is in where is in Kane's place where Kane was. Yeah, with that great Luke Harper grin on his face and uh, <laughs> reaching out for a tag. Yeah, he wants the hot tag. He wants the hot tag. Uh, he ends up uh, kicking Randy Orton in the face. Who then gets put into the sister Abigail? One, two, three. Bray Wyatt wins, gets the pinfall, um, which was fantastic. This feud is going where it should go with yep. with Bray Wyatt. Like they're making him, they're they're really making Bray and the family out to be a threat to Randy Orton. Um, he's eaten two tags and he's eaten two pins now in the span of forty eight hours. Yep, I think that's fantastic for yep. the for the Wyatt family. Hopefully, this will really. Propel Bray to that next level. I, I hope mean, so. Bray, I feel like maybe this is that thing that they're going to use to launch Bray up into that. Because at SmackDown, Bray can go up into that main event scene oh, at easily. any time. Easily. At any time. So, um, so yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, it was good. Would you like to answer some questions? Yeah. Answer questions now. Carlos Hackworth. Yes, sir. Do you... Do you think WWE oh, yeah. could put Luke Harper in the IC picture seeing how he's a former IC champion... Apollo Crews, Baron Corbin, Jack Swagger could also fight for the title just to give everyone something to do after the Miz Dolph rematch. I can definitely see Corbin involved. I think Corbin's next in line, man. Yeah. He I mean he's already had plenty of feuding with Dolph, so we know they know each other well. Um I don't know about Luke Harper. I think that he's gonna be helping Bray Wyatt get that world title. I I, I really want to hope I'm really hoping for that. Yeah. Um and I hope that's what they do. Yeah, agreed. So I don't I don't want to believe anything else, Carlos. Yeah. Uh Raf Rodriguez. <clears throat> hey Frendo, has been a fan for a recent while now. Stumbled upon the channel when I first saw the recaps on Machinima. Nice, that's good to know. Yeah, anyways, seeing the events of this past pay per view in which some things were completely predictable, Dolph winning and AJ retaining. I don't think Dolph winning was initially. Oh, I thought that was a toss up. I think we yeah, both, yeah. yeah, they did yeah. a great job selling that. When do you see the champion, or where do you see the championship booking heading? Uh, Dolph and Miz are going to fight at least one more time for a rematch. I'm predicting Cena wins his 16th title at Survivor Series, then losing it around Rumble time, then winning it again at Mania to break the record. Uh, I don't know if Cena's 16th and 17th are going to come so close together. I mean, we've sort of talked about that a little bit here on the show. 
I think Cena's 16th tying it is going to be made to be a huge deal by the WWE. And then maybe, hell, two years down yeah. the line, they'll yeah. give him his 17th. That's where I'm sort of thinking right now. Um, I definitely think that he will get his 16th at WrestleMania. I would, I would, I would kind of agree with that, and I think that's good. I think that giving AJ a nice long run with it yep. is really is a good idea, and then maybe after that we can see Bray getting into the mix. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, Dolphin Miz, uh, I, I don't know. I, I would sort of think that Baron Corbin's kind of waiting there for the IC title. Yeah, that's sort of my my feeling on that. Yeah, one. I, I agree with you there. Retired Dwayne Nix. Yes, sir. I really thought the Usos were winning the tag straps at No Mercy. Do you yeah. guys think they get the straps the next SmackDown pay per view? Or do you see them getting booked like the club is getting booked on Raw? Mm. Keep getting shots, but ultimately losing. P.S. Hope you guys had a great time at No Mercy. Next time WWE comes to San Diego, it'd be awesome if you guys can make the trip down here. That'd be fun. Yeah, San Diego's nice. It is very nice. Oh, man. Do we see the Usos in these in these darn tag straps? Uh, do you see them? To, I, I said this earlier. Do you see them? I don't know if they're going to take the, the tag straps off of Heath until they need to, until he's not over anymore because yeah. he's extremely over. And, but there's really no other viable heel tag team mm-hmm. yeah. on SmackDown right now. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Pretty boy, Adam Mayhem. Hey, friendos. Hello. Tonight, Adam Mayhem wants to talk about the women. First, in regards to Bailey having squashes and not using NXT talent because he cannot job the new talent, I think it'll be okay as long as the match isn't a squash, squash, mm-hmm. and it is a competitive match. They job out, but they look good, so they can use it as motivation to do better at NXT. Uh, we talked about this a bit on the show that you've probably seen by the time this goes up. Yeah. Um, I'm. You, we, we sort of had a back and forth about using NXT talent. Uh, which I personally think in in certain situations, such as the one they have with Bailey right now, it's not a bad idea because there are certain people like Liv Morgan, for example, who's in developmental, but she's sort of at the beginning of her developmental stage when I think it's okay for her to come up to the main roster, get that exposure, understand what it's like to be in a big in front of a big audience like that and take the loss against Bailey because then you have name recognition across both brands Um Losing to Bailey is not that big of. I mean that that's that's okay. You can yeah. lose to somebody big like that, yeah. and and maintain whatever status you might have um, back down on NXT. Um, but at the same time, actually, I, I I like the use of local enhancement talent. I yeah. think it's fun. I think you get a glimpse into you get you get people like James Ellsworth. You get people like James Ellsworth. You get some interesting characters out there. Body types you might not see, characters you might not see. It gives the locals, you know, somebody to pop for. Yep. I like the use of local enhancement talent. I think that using NXT developmental talent, I think uh, in certain situations can work. Yeah, but it shouldn't be a constant thing. You're here, not going to bring Asuka out and job her to Bailey. No. I'm not talking about that. No. Uh, second part of his question. Do you all think the Naomi versus Bliss match on Sunday was a botch at the end and Alexa wasn't supposed to lose. It looked that way. No, I think that I think that they want Naomi to pick up some wins and I think they're doing it strategically. I was bummed out as well because I think Alexa needed to be booked strong, but it looks like they're going to make that up um, on yes. next Tuesday. Yes. How do you pronounce that? Uh, I'd be chubbin. Okay. During No Mercy, did you hear the referee... Oh, sorry. During No Mercy, did you hear the reference to Harley Quinn when Alexa Bliss came to the ring? And did you hear it get shut down by JBL almost immediately? When this happened, I just pictured your faces with giant grins. That's fantastic. No, I have not watched the the thing. And obviously, in the arena, they don't have the commentary. Yeah. Um, I think that's hilarious. I think that's cool. Um, good job, JBL. Yeah. He gets a two-sweet from Steve here. Okay. Do you want to be the surrogate JBL and take my two-sweet? No? Maggle? You're not gonna. You're not gonna sell my too sweet maggle. Okay. Continue, please. Smap D Jones. Ciao, friendos. Ciao. <clears throat> With AJ Styles winning by questionable means once again, do you feel that WWE is turning him into a modern Ric Flair type, so that when Cena defeats him for the title, they can say that in a way Cena defeated a Flair type? Or am I reading too much into this? I think you're reading way too much into it, my friend. Um, I don't know. I. I mean, yeah. I. I get what you're saying. Um, but I don't think they really care about that. And I don't really think, yeah, I don't really think I care about that. A win is a win is a win. Yep. Marty too sweet. We met him the other day. Yeah. Hello, Steve and, uh, Steve. He says, hello, Steve-O and Larson. I got two questions for you. Do you guys think Dolph Ziggler should start doing the open challenge? If not, how would you book him? 
And who would you make him lose it to? Baron Corbin isn't winning that belt. You don't think he's winning the IC belt? Not anytime soon. Really? Why do you say that? They're not going to build up Dolph and give him the belt just to be a transitional champion. You are correct. I don't, think, I don't think he's going to win anytime soon. No. Yeah. Maybe, you know, a few months. Maybe. I don't know. It, you know, it, it, I, the, the, the sort of cynic in me thinks that they could do that. I would hope that SmackDown is, is, is going to continue to treat the IC belt the way it should be treated. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a hot prize right now. Yes. They could view that as a way to, to get Baron Corbin over even more. You don't put a belt on a guy to get, get them over. Don't tell that to the WWE because they've done that before. I know, and past. usually it doesn't Plenty work. In the past. And usually it doesn't work. You're probably right. Second question, how, how do you guys book Dean Ambrose all the way to WrestleMania? Here's the thing about SmackDown, though. I think they're clever enough to get the belt on Baron and make it compelling. At the moment. What but can he, moment? like the moment where he wins it, or the yeah. storyline leading up to it can be compelling, but what does he do after that? That's how you bring true legitimacy to the that belt. That's always the question, I agree. Winning it is kind of like the easiest part. Don't tell that to Dolph Ziggler. It took him a while. No, I know, but like maintaining that momentum and making it an int- making the belt mean something. If they brought out involved if, if, an interesting storyline, if after the next pay per view, the Miz, you know, still lost, yeah, and Dolph still had it, and then they just trotted out Baron Corbin, and he won at the next pay per view, and it was just crap. I agree, but I think that Sm- I think SmackDown could do a feud between him and Dolph Ziggler where it maintained the legitimacy of the belt and Baron Corbin it because I have I have faith No, I'm not just I'm not I'm not disagreeing with that part. I'm saying after Baron wins, mm-hmm. how do you continue to make the belt look legitimate on a guy who hasn't had the experience or doesn't have the gravitas of Miz or Dolph? Yeah. What was the question? How would you and who would you make him lose it to? Yeah, I don't know. Samoa yeah, Joe. Okay. Well, that's a problem though. That that's a problem. That's kind of the problem, though, isn't it? Is that there's no mid card? Yeah, exactly. That's the problem. There's that is no a mid card. So I have no idea. I mean, I think long term Baron, because they're really positioning him to be that guy. But Samoa Joe. I don't know. I mean, I, I think it'd be cool. I think it'd be neat if if Baron came out and said, "Oh, Dolph, you're an easy mark. I'm going to take what's yours because we've been through this before." But you're right. After that, what does he do? Pff, I have no idea. Yeah. Samoa Joe in the IC title? Yeah, man. Boy, that'd be legit. Yeah. All right, continue. And hey, we didn't answer his second question. I know. I was saying continue the second oh, okay. question. Okay. Uh, How would you guys book Dean, Dean Ambrose all the way to WrestleMania? <laughs> Him and AJ go through Survivor Series. Go to, go to the Rumble where AJ goes over. And then Dean takes on... Shit, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. It's so hard to project out because you don't know how the brand might change or the roster might change. And there's not the bottom line is there's just not a lot for for him to do. What are you gonna do? Dean versus Bray? I've seen that a few times already. Dean versus Randy. Dean versus Randy. Dean goes heel. Randy goes heel where he kind of belongs. Although I like the work that Randy's doing with Bray. Yeah. It's interesting stuff. Yeah. I don't know. There doesn't seem to be a, you know what an I like obvious it. next step for yeah, Dean. That's what I like about it, though. I like I that. I like that we have no idea who they're going to trot out for these people. Yeah. It's good. No, I do, too. All right. Eddie Men. Eddie Men. Hey, friendos. Love your show. Thank you. Enjoy hearing my questions, and I'm sure all the other patrons feel the same. You guys make my work day go really fast. Nice. That's the best. I know. That's the best. Wish you guys had a podcast every day, all day long. It's not going to happen. Uh, my question. Maybe one day we'll go daily. Yeah. Maybe one day. Not just daily, but like an eight-hour podcast. I can never. That's the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> my question is, what do you guys think about the idea of Bo Dallas teaming with Braun Strowman and then joining the rest of the Wyatt family with Bo being on Raw? That's not a bad idea. We talked about that on uh, Going in Raw. I don't think it's good, but, but we didn't talk today. about the Braun thing. No. The Braun aspect of it is a good idea. I, don't th- I think Braun is completely divorced of the Wyatt family. Yes. That's something that I would love to explore. Um, you know, if I were there at creative, but I just don't see it happening. Imagine Bray being surrounded by not just strong personalities on his level, but strong 
physical competitors with strong personalities. I know, I know. It'd be fantastic. It'd be great. The dynamic between the three or four members of the Wyatt family who are all, all really strong competitors, really strong personalities. There's so many stories, really interesting. so many stories to be told there. I like that Braun idea though. Yeah. Mitchell Ward. Which wrestlers do you think are hurt the most by the PG restrictions of WWE? Dean Ambrose makes me imagine how bad Stone Cold would be in the PG era, how good Dean could be in a non PG one. Yeah, no, I kind of agree with that. Um Dean, I think is like like he says here. Dean is sort of the obvious, the obvious sort of choice right there. Um, Kevin Owens. If you look at Kevin Owens, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, obviously he can't be dropping f bombs, but um, I think Kevin Owens, the intensity he was bringing in his indie days, um, had to be kind of tempered. Has to be kind of tempered in yeah. the WWE. I was just thinking about that the other day because I watched the the uh, the Mount Rushmore of wrestling promo he did with oh, Cole yeah. in the in the Bucks. And, uh, you know, it's F-bombs left and right. But it's all very intense stuff. And I was like, you know, he can't really do what he used to do. Yeah. Um, but uh, so I think Kevin Owens probably is like it's him and Dean. One yeah. and two. Yeah. yeah. Those are good answers. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Clayton C. Greetings, friendos. I'm Hi. probably eating a sausage egg and cheese McGriddle while listening to this. Mm. Good luck to your bowels, my friend. But that's irrelevant to my question. I have no idea why I brought it up. You always compare Dan to the Hulk Hogan of going in raw. So out of the two of you, me and Larson, who would be Scott Hall and who would be Kevin Nash? So if we're talking physicalities, I'm taller than you. I'm slower than you. My knees are probably worse than yours. I'd probably be Kevin Nash if we're talking physicalities. Yeah. However, if we're talking personalities, I'm sort of the 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 one who's a bit more unfiltered of the two yeah. of us. So I'd probably be the Scott Hall of the two of us. Okay. What do you think? That's fine. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, it, it, there's that's not a committal answer right there. I don't have an argument against that. Okay. All right. Chris Kimmel. Hello, friendos. So is the World Championship and Women's Championship not going to be defended at Survivor Series because their best wrestlers would be in that five-on-five five match? And... Ain't there like six women wrestlers on SmackDown Live? We already talked about. I that. mean, if we were There's entered seven. into like a costume battle royal and we had to be home, I'd be I'd be Nash. Yeah, because you're you're also hairier than me. That is true. And you do I think a better Scott Hall than me. Hey yo, you do a better Razor Ramon than yeah, me. I, I think I do a better Scott Hall than yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> but really, the only Razor Ramon I can do was when he was Scott Hall in WCW when he first showed I up. No, it's great. It's I love it. That's all you need. Uh, Chris Kimmel, what is it again? I'm sorry. So it's the World Championship. Uh, oh, we already talked about that. Okay. Five on five and stuff. Oh, yeah. Josh Prineda. Hey, friendos. Josh here. Wondering if you think at any point the WWE will go away from the PG era type programming and come back with bleeding and chair shots to the head or any no. weapon to the head. No. Or do you think this is? No. Dude, never, you're never going to see it. The, at no point in, in, in the future is head, are headshots going to be healthy. Yep. Are going to get healthier for you. Nope. So you're never going to see that again. Now, that being said... On the indie level, in Ring of Honor, TNA, they still don't do it. And thank God they don't do that because nobody wants to see that. But, like, I went to SoCal Uncensored. Oh. Um, where they review, like, indie, yeah. S- Southern California yeah. indie wrestling. And there are still shows out there where they do some really, really stupid things. Some really stupid things. What are you going to do? In front of an audience of fifteen people, you're not. Nobody's going to shut you down. I know. So, uh, but no, I I never want to see that. No, never want to see it. No, Andrew Wormley. Hey, friendos. Hello. Who would you want to see on each brand Survivor Series teams? Let's just talk about. Uh, I mean, like the the rosters or the teams for the women's and tag mm-hmm. uh, matches kind of seem pretty self evident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of the limited roster size. Yeah. But the singles male uh, spots mm-hmm. are available to a larger number of participants, it seems. All right. I mean, on SmackDown. All right. But at least on Raw. Well, on, on SmackDown. Let's just go through them all. Why not? All right. On Smack. No, no. Just, let's do men's. Okay. Men's is fine. Because you're right about the other things. Uh, SmackDown men's. Cena. Yeah. Styles. Yeah. Ambrose. Baron Corbin. And James Ellsworth. Okay. Look. Or, or about this. Cena. Hold on. Think about this. Cena. And tell me who wins. Cena, James Ellsworth, uh, Simon Gotch. No, because Gotch will be in the tag match. 
That's okay. He'll do double duty. He'll be even more depleted. Um, the fat Ascension guy and Mojo Raleigh he doesn't even exist. Versus the five best people on Raw, Cena still wins. Oh, Survivor yeah. Series 2010 taught me anything. Yeah. Cena you mean SummerSlam. Wins. SummerSlam 2010. Raw Cena will be Owens, Jericho, Rollins. Mm-hmm. Um, Sami Zayn. Reigns and Zayn. Or Rusev. Or Rusev. I mean, if you want best right now, power rankings, yeah. you yeah. leave Zayn out of what we just said. Yeah. yeah. Put in, uh, Rusev in. Rusev Machka. Yeah. Yeah. But it'll be interesting how they manage the heel face dynamic. Yeah, exactly. Well. World Brass Knuckles champion Justin England. Hey, friendos. I which... like that because you say it like Dolph Ziggler says, world best chicken sandwich. Mm-hmm. Uh, which path do you think could do more for Bray after the Orton feud, Intercontinental or World title? Mm. Personally, I think he could do great things with the Intercontinental title and needs it to legitimize himself before ever even sniffing at the World title. That is, of course, if they ever even give him a title. We can't all be so lucky. What do you guys think? Icy belt fills beneath Bray. Bray has that Monopoly card that says... Uh, go directly to world title. Go- <laughs> exactly. Collect $200, go directly to world title. Yeah. Yeah. Rob Gutierrez. Hey, friend. Knows it always gets under my skin when WWE has the champion come out first for a title match. I totally agree. And they did that with The Miz and John Cena at WrestleMania 27. Yep. I mean, they do that plenty, but it bugs the crap out of me Yeah, too, I don't Rob. like that either. I don't know, it's just me being old school, but I feel like the champ should always come out last. I agree, I don't care who the champ is. If you're holding the belt, the title, you should come out last. Agreed. doesn't matter who the bigger draw is. Chandler 3 Productions. What's up, Steve and Heel Larson? Was AJ Styles versus James Ellsworth match the funniest thing in recent memory? Or as a fan, we shouldn't laugh at matches like that. Oh, no. It, look, it's entertainment. Yeah, the whole. I mean, it was booked as a comedy match. It's not meant to be taken seriously, and then but AJ sold it seriously. Yeah, so it's a but that enhanced part of the canon. Com- that enhanced the comedy of the match, though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Jason, the gimmickless cabbie. Is James Ellsworth the new Brooklyn? I kind of feel that cabbie is your gimmick. You're like a, a mid '90s WWF guy, and the cabbie thing is your gimmick. So you can't say you don't have a gimmick, Jason. You got a gimmick. You're a cabbie. Okay. But seriously, it seems strange that you have these talented, over-with-the-crowd women like Naomi and Bailey, but they keep getting underutilized on their respective shows. Bailey is squashing jobbers. Naomi is substituting for sick and injured competitors. And neither seem to be going anywhere with it. Yes, they are being booked strong in their respective shows, but just feels like no payoff. Is it just something we are going to have to put up with until creative can write something better? In Bailey's case, she has to be doing something while Charlotte and Sasha... Yeah. Finish their feud. Oh, I think I think it's. I, I kind of disagree with this. I think it's 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 completely obvious that they have huge plans for Bailey. It's just there's one title mm-hmm. and there's two people who are ahead of her in line. Yep. And so she has to wait her turn. She'll get a huge WrestleMania moment. Mm-hmm. And Naomi, I think that just look there was any number of competitors they could have put in there against Alexa Bliss. They went with Naomi, and we we're both huge fans of yes. Naomi, and I know Jason is too. Um, and I think that is a signal. That they have plans for her down the line. It's just Becky is so over as a face right now. She can't do that. Yeah. So um, I would like to see a secondary, and we 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 see this with Nikki and Carmella. So a secondary tertiary, I guess, would be third. What would third be? I think so. Okay, another women's uh, uh, division uh, feud. Maybe that even carries over to like main event. Yeah. And that's one reason they can mention it on SmackDown. Well, it's one reason it's people, for people to check out main event and superstars. On, you know, for all we know, Darren Young might be on Superstars. Yeah. You know, with his own story. We have no idea. Yeah. It'd be great if they sold that to us on Raw. Then yeah. it's like, oh, that's a reason well, to check it out. SmackDown has the advantage of talking smack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. To push people to Superstars main event. Right. To check out additional stories. Yeah. Vincent Palmieri. pair of questions from him. The first being about tag team finishers, specifically for the Usos. Do y'all think they need something new? And what would you have them do that isn't the splash and super kicks combo, something to fit their mo- new motif? They do have a new finisher. Mm-hmm. They tried to uh, blow out someone's knee <laughs> yeah, that's with right. a kick to it and yeah. then put them in a half crab. Yeah. yeah. Second question, more importantly, what goal would we have to hit for a Q&A podcast featuring you two and Dan? Because mm. we don't do Q&As on the, on the pay-per-views. Yeah. Um, I don't really know if that's a goal. It's more of a scheduling type situation. Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. We we never really talked about that. Well, he's saying what goal in terms of contribution goal? Wait, what? What goal would we have to hit? 
what goal do we have to hit for a Q&A? Podcast? What goal? What Patreon goal? Yeah, no, that's what I was saying. Like, okay. We haven't really discussed it as a Patreon type thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I I don't know. We haven't really thought about that. Um, I don't think I wouldn't frame it in, in terms of like what, you know, it being a Patreon thing. No. Um, I think I think we just we have that structure with Dan that we've had like since day one. Mm-hmm. And like there's no like we haven't found a need to like sort of deviate from it. Nope. Because then, I mean, the podcast probably ended up being like three hours long. We yes. added questions to recap plus book of the match. Yeah. So, yeah. Steve Allisey. <clears throat> How long do you think the Spirit Squad nonsense is going to continue? I was tired of them when they were in WWE in 2006. Even more tired of them now. I think they set up a six-man match for next week with Dolph and the Tag Champs against Miz and the Spirit Squad. Can this be the last we see of them? Please. I I don't know. I'm I'm kind of with you on that one. I don't really want to see them around for a while. I, I don't I don't. I, I like their presence as a as a storytelling mechanic. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, it's yeah, literally yeah. Dolph vanquishing his past. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah, for a better future. Yeah, I like that. But I don't want to see them stick around I like the headbangers. I don't want to see them stick around. Well, they showed up that once, and then they're, they they. I know come back. exactly. I know they'll probably be back next week for the aforementioned six man tag match, and that'll be that. Yeah. Let's, we can hope. Because I'm, I'm on board with that. I, I don't really want to see them long term. Will Fernandez. Hey, friendos. My question yesterday talked about a way to bring talent over to SmackDown through Survivor Series. And now we see they made three five versus five matches. Do you think if they do a bet where the winning team get a superstar, do you think it will be three random wrestlers or one woman, one tag, and one male wrestler? If that's the way I say send the club and Sami Zayn to SmackDown, even Rita Raw. Will is pushing hard for this idea, yeah, man. He, he, he wants likes to that see angle. Swap. He loves it. I don't think it's going to happen, Will, but you know, if it does, I'll be happy for you. Yeah. Give you a high five and a two sweet. Jason White Jr. Hey, guys. Hello. I became a patron last month, but first time asking a question. Thank you, Jason. On Talking Smack, Brian announced three matches for next week. Alexa versus Naomi. Yep. Corbin versus Swagger. Again. And Styles versus Ellsworth for the world title. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. You think he's going to eat another Styles Clash? I hope not. Phenomenal forearm this time. And maybe the calf crusher. Yeah. At the end of the show, after Daniel left the set, the Wyatt's video hit. And Renee was there with Bray and Luke. And then she took off, and Bray and Luke cut a promo Ooh. about the family being whole again. That's kind of cool. I really like the direction they're taking with Wyatt the past month and hope it continues. What do you all think? Also, where was Kurt Hawkins tonight? <laughs> WWE tweeted out right before the show he was having his debut match and then he wasn't on the show and not really complaining since I think he's annoying. Yeah, no, me too. It was kind of funny. I think he probably got bumped because they didn't realize that the Ellsworth segment was going to take as long as it did. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that's what happened to Kurt Hawkins. I'm not, I'm not crying tears about it. Look, for all I know, a month from now, he'll be my favorite guy of all time. Just up until this moment right now, I could care less about yeah. him. I think it's I think it's cheesy and, and silly. Yeah. Um, as far as the, the how they're handling the Wyatt family, I want to watch top Talking notch. Smack now. Yeah, top notch. I love it man. as of late. They've I been doing it. great work with them. I want them to like spread throughout SmackDown like a disease. Yeah, that's how it should be, man. Colt Mallet, best name. First thing, first to quote the great Kenny Banyan, the Ellsworth Ambrose style segment was gold, Jerry gold. Second thing, the commercial split screen needs to happen from here on out of yes. Raw and SmackDown. is great. I love it. Overall, another great SmackDown becoming more and more the A-show each week if it hasn't happened already. The first hour of SmackDown was a little so-so. It wasn't great. But yeah. the last hour was good. The last hour was We have good. one more question. Okay. Hey, friendo. Seeing there are three Survivor Series type matches, I feel like there is plenty of opportunity for a big swerve where someone turns on their brand and joins the other team. See, that is a way to have superstars cross brands. Mm-hmm. Uh, what superstar team do you think makes the most sense to jump ship, and how would you book them on their new show? I mean, I, I think that... I would love... Oh, man. Oh, my oh man, that's a mess. Uh, I, would love to see, I would love to see Sami Zayn come out and challenge... I don't know. I guess Dolph Ziggler, but you know, if you need to have a heel in there. I don't think you need to have a heel. But I'd love to see Sami Zayn come out and challenge Baron Corbin. You know, challenge yeah. somebody. I don't yeah. know what to do, but I want Sami Zayn on SmackDown. I think he's being completely wasted on yeah. Raw. There's Agreed. no need for him to be there. He should have gone to SmackDown to the brand split. Yeah. Are you ready, Larson? Yeah, trivia time. Trivia time. The first card I drew was one year he did, or we had done before. So make sure it's not the same case with your card. Oh, I can't say this one. Yeah, you would not be happy with that. What was the stunt that Roddy Piper pulled at... Uh, well, what was it, Bad News Brown? Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Not good. You can't be doing that anymore. I don't want to talk about it. All right, are you ready? Who goes first? You uh, I'll read first. All right, go ahead. Dusty Rhodes created the name for which WCW winter pay-per-view? Uh, Starcade. Mm-hmm. Okay. What pop singer featured Lou Albano in three of her videos? Cindy Lauper. Okay. Name all four superstars Randy Savage defeated at WrestleMania four. Oh, that one's tough. That's really tough. Whoa, WrestleMania four? Yeah, it's the one that uh, was a tournament to determine a new uh, champion. Oh, fuck. That's tough. I couldn't do this. DiBiase? Yeah, that's what he faced in the finals. <clears throat> that's right, because DiBiase said he might have won. Okay, and there's three others. Yep. Um, Slaughter? Nope. Steamboat? Nope. Duggan? Nope. Do you give up? Rick Rude. No. Perfect. Butch Reed. <laughs> okay. Greg Valentine. Okay. One Man Gang. Oh, I didn't even know he was around until like, okay, man. Oh, boy. That's tough. Who is the only male ever to hold the women's championship? Uh, Santino Morella. No, Harvey Whippleman. Oh. And we're going by these cards. Okay. No, that's fine. It's <laughs> the the uh, book of the match, WrestleMania 25, I saw Santino won a, a, oh, okay. a Divas Battle right. Royale. I thought it might have been for the belt. He might have, but we because remember last week? No, I know. We have to go by the cards. We have to go by the, the moops. Yep. I'm sorry. It's Harvey Whippleman. Which triple threat rivals did Mr. Kennedy defeat in 2006 to win the U.S. Championship? Wait, I'm sorry. Which triple to use? Uh, which, which triple threat rivals did Mr. Kennedy defeat okay, in 2006 right. so to win the U.S. Championship? Uh, Matt Hardy and MVP. No. <laughs> Who was it? Finley and Bobby Lashley. Shit. I'm still at one. <laughs> Me too. Okay. What shocking act did Kamala commit on a 1987 episode of Tuesday Night Titans? I have no idea. He ate a live chicken. Wow. That's, That's fucked up. That is shocking. Is that still on the network? I don't know. Go ahead. Which type of brawl did Batista and Jonathan Coachman contest at 2005's Taboo Tuesday? Um, I'm going to say a street fight. Yeah. Nice. Two. They okay. kind of gave it away with brawl, huh? Not a lot of other brawls in the world, are there? Yeah, okay. Uh, what WWE great briefly worked for the New York Daily News? Ooh. Michael Cole. Um, well, he's not really great. But a <laughs> news reporter. S.D. Jones? Special Delivery Jones. Oh, okay. Uh, don't know. Uh, no, it's my, your okay, turn. Okay, your turn, yeah. What is the only championship Virgil ever won during his tenure in WWE? Million dollar belt? Yep. Okay. You secured yourself victory for the week. <laughs> Best I can do is two. Okay, well, let's see if you can get a two. Okay. What is the name of Jeff Hardy's band? Oh, shoot. It's weird. <laughs> it is weird. But I don't remember what it is. Tell me. Perox Y Gen? Yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> Ooh, I get to pick a thing. Where are the things? Go get know. the things. I don't know where the cards are at. They're over there. Go get it. Go. Didn't we both get cards? Go get it. Didn't we both get cards last week? You know why? Because we tied. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I don't know where the stack of cards is. I'm the winner. What did I get last week, by the way? We both got three last week. Oh, who did you get? Who did I get? What did I get? You got Paul London. Let's go right here. Ah, I got Paul London. That makes me so happy. Oh, there they are. They're over there. I got them. Ooh, who am I going to get today? Who am I going to get? Let's find out. All right, I'm going to shuffle a little bit. I'm going to pick one from the middle. Today I got... Rene Dupree costs $27,000. Salary is $6,000. I don't remember him looking like this. He's the most generic superstar I've ever seen in my life. Rene Dupree. I'm underwhelmed. I liked Paul London. That dude was a good wrestler. Yeah. I think he teamed with uh, Kendrick. He did. They uh, had the record, the tag title record before the New Day broke. That's correct. Exactly. Ooh, I like that one. I want to let us know what you guys got in your scores for the trivia challenge today. Yes, please. <laughs> in our comments. Anyways, uh, that's uh, our SmackDown show. And we'll be back on uh, Friday with the dirt sheet. Yeah. That's right. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.